Hello brave heroes and welcome to Gameloft's office in Sofia, Bulgaria. I'm happy to welcome you to the first edition of the Ask Me Anything sessions with our dev team. I brought here today Heroes of the Dark's lead game designer, Alex, to answer your questions and walk you through what's to come in the world to neighbors. Hi Martin, thanks for having me here. Well, let's get started. Brave heroes, thank you for sending us hundreds of questions on Discord and on Facebook in the past couple of days. We've summarized them in several sections and even if we don't manage to reply to all of them today, we'll keep having these sessions on a monthly basis and keeping the game as transparent as possible for you, our community. Now let's go straight to the most popular and the most burning question, the heart of the neighbors. Alex, tell us more about the heart, what it is and what should the players expect from it. Heart of Tenebris will be our biggest feature and though I can't give you all the details yet, as we are still in development, I can guarantee it will bring excitement during the final battle with Emperor and the benefits will last for a long time after the glorious encounter. The Heart of Tenebris will be an epic guild event in which all the players will give their chance to prove their strength against their competitors. I can't wait to roll out the big features of 2022 with the Heart of Tenebris. I'll be honest, I've seen it in development and it looks awesome. Meanwhile, what other big features are coming before the Heart of Nebris goes live? Solo and raid bosses are coming as a grand PV content, providing solo and guild challenges. Let me tell you what can be expected in update 2. First, we are excited to introduce the Lunar New Year activities with our gorgeous new Lunar World Map environment. And the two new heroes, Hugh Ren, the first melee nuker using the brand new Yin and Yang mechanic, and finally the long-awaited Werewolf Bruiser, Euphoria. But most importantly, we are focusing on quality of life changes like old-time leaderboards, setting score presets, loading tips, and few more. From here, we've grouped the questions into the following sections. We start with servers. Some of the most popular questions were about potential mergers and servers competing against each other. Servers merging will appear as the next evolution step after Heart of the Nebus. We want to group the veterans from the old trium together. For the cross room competition, I can tell you that will be our primary focus once the bosses are rolled out. These features are in the pipeline of 2022 and we will start giving you some sneak peeks once we get closer. A question that I'm also confident to answer, how often should players expect new servers to open? Usually, every couple of weeks we will be opening a new realm. However, as there are some periods with an increased number of new players, we are continuously optimizing the logic behind new servers, making sure we are adapting it to the player's overall experience in the vital first few weeks of their progressions. The next question is for you. How will the players be able to get their hands on heroes like Fangrim, Mantis, Morwenna, Victor and other event-exclusive ones? So far, we've been working tirelessly to provide at least a couple of new heroes with every update and this will continue. Once we have enough heroes available for a deep and appealing roster, we will make sure that they will start appearing more often. People want to know if and when we'll be adding more campaign chapters. Thanks to the constant feedback from Discord and our Facebook page, we're following players' demand on a daily basis. This is why players won't need to wait much longer as the day two is just around the corner and new campaign, new category chapters will be available in it. One of the most popular questions is about the catacombs and their power scaling. To be fair, the OG heroes who were with us during the soft launch remember much more difficult versions of the catacombs. 
There's also a question about the catacombs rewards after level 90. Oh yes, absolutely. We can't completely tell you the formula behind the difficulty of the feature. But we can say that we've been working a lot of making it competitive and still rewarding. We're researching the best solution for more enjoyable and rewarding catacombs, especially in the later stage when players really need to be experienced and have a big roster to more often complete them. Our players have been destroying enemies on the world map. Do we envision these enemies attacking back at some point? Yes, we are having plans for invasion event that will provide uh, the opposite concept. Players will need to fend off the enemies and protect their lands and mansions. Last question from this section. Is there a plan to add more levels for the heroes and for the throne room? Glad you asked that. We are definitely going there. I can't tell you when it will arrive, but it might have a connection with Heart of the Nebris evolution. Our hero roster is one of the most important pillars of the game. We've invested so much into creating them and we're very happy with the positive feedback we've received about the hero's looks and mechanics. Let's go through some of the main questions about the heroes. First, how and when will Albus be unlocked? Right now, Albus is sitting on his throne inside the heart of the Nebis. Maybe if he's not occupying with being an emperor, he will become available to the players. Do we have plans for additional races in the Nebris, like zombies? They are not in our eminent plans, but definitely something to consider in the Tenebris universe. Can the players get a hero restart button to take back all the invested tokens so that they can focus on another hero? Stefan Soldat on our Facebook page suggests that this can cost 5000 gems. There are also similar questions for leveling down heroes to salvage resources. We are thinking about logic like that. It is definitely intriguing, but we are still wondering as player commitment to different heroes is ma making the game diverse and interesting. We are also very happy to observe that more than 90% of heroes are used and developed by everyone. This is very unique for a game with a hero collection element. How does an unequip button for the heroes sound to you? Sounds great. It's already in our extensive quality of life backlog. People are asking for sorting buttons on the hero menu where they can sort their roster by a race or class. When do you believe that we can introduce such a feature? I really want to say soon, as once again it is in the quality of live backlog and hopefully we will deliver it to our audience in the next few updates. What are the plans for the talent section for each hero? Talents will definitely allow players to create their unique version of every hero as the talents will rely on new combat mechanics rather than simple stat boosters. What are the plans for hero rebalancing? For us, this will be a never-ending process of improving the underperforming heroes. Sometimes the hero as a full kit is not competitive anymore or is getting outshined by a new release hero like Lacroix or Lambda. In other cases, it's about simple mechanics like Mantis Charge that needs to be addressed. So please follow the hero roster balancing changes in every update info section. Can we get an official explanation on armor and magic resistance? Like what counters what exactly? Spot on question. We need to do a better job with the description of our damage mitigation attributes. The answer is ultimate hits with magic damage, no matter the class and the race. Encounter them with magic resistance. The normal attacks and passive abilities hit with physical damage. Therefore, you should use armor to stop those. Last question that I'll answer myself. Will we be adding the Arabic language to the game? Short answer, yes. Work on this is ongoing as we speak. And if all goes well, our Arabic players will enjoy the game in their native language in update 3 after the one on February 1st. Our guilds are essential to the gameplay. I really don't think it's possible to survive on your own in Tenebris. You would miss a lot of rewards and fun times if you're not in a guild. Here are some of the questions for the guild mechanics. We'll start with, will resource trading inside the guilds become possible? Yes, we want to open the resource and other materials trade inside the alliance. When would we create some sort of a training ground where guilds can prepare themselves for PvP events? 
This sounds really cool, but for now you can just hit an NPC or other player to learn that. Will there be any new upcoming guild activities in the map? I believe that the upcoming Heart of the Nebris and the Raid Bosses activities are exactly what you're looking for and within the next couple of months they'll become available for more guilds related gameplay. There is a question from Elaif on Discord about clan promotions. They're saying there is no reward for the inner place among the clan. Make a reward for inside the guild for the first 15 to 20 places only. Alex, this is true, but the clans actually do a great job self-regulating themselves. If somebody is inactive or doesn't contribute very often, usually this member doesn't get the pass from the top performers in the guild. There is one problem, what will happen if your leader is not performing and has stopped playing for weeks? In this case, a system will address it and uh, remove the inactive player and appoint a new one from the active top rank players. A question from Endemic on Discord. Are there plans for youth management features like donation leaderboard, bulletin board for the game manager, the officers to post information, leader replacement when absent and so on. The donation leaderboard is in the backlog, the bulletin is not for now, but we will look into it. Inactive leader replacement is a must-have feature as I mentioned before. Another question from Endemic. Gear currently seems to cap out around level 98, with only rare drops at 120 from level 8 dungeons and 150 from level 9. Is there a plan to add higher level legendary gear? Yes, and it will arrive with the Heart of the Nebris Evolution once again. More of a suggestion from Discord. Make it impossible for a player that is not an ally of a guild to be able to teleport into a territory that isn't theirs. It would also help to plan how people should set up territories. We are thinking about different but rather similar solutions, being able to remove players from your territories once you defeat them as sometimes players leave a guild. If we remove the teleportation in some situation, the PvP will suffer as a cluster of alliances might make attackers start a few minute long marches. Thank you for watching Brave Heroes and for being such an active and passionate community. If your question was not answered today, don't worry, we'll be making these AMA sessions regularly and we'll continue replying to your suggestions on Facebook and Discord. Stay tuned for more Heroes of the Dark related content on our YouTube channel. Good luck!